Yo. Ain't no predicting luck, you can't stop change Waited your life to get some comfort in your fate We your brains that won't own this, let's face facts Even that ego is for sale, you best to hide it in that bag before they check it It's beauty in the struggle, I know it's hard to juggle Trying to change the world when you can't even afford the daily double Brothers be ball or blocking, others be calling shots And sometimes it feel like you just can't win But finding yourself in a community of people With unity, your equals stay with you from birth Fam at City Point, your temples let us anoint. Simply caring, simply community, simply church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's simply church. Yeah, uh, it's simply church. Yo, what up, City Point? It is a blessing to be able to be with you guys. I am excited that we are once again together. We're together digitally this Sunday. So what's up, City Point, wherever you are all over the country, it is good to be able to connect with you digitally. Uh, let's bow in a word of prayer, and then we are going to jump into some music, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Lord, we thank you for giving us a chance to come together. I thank you for what is this community called City Point Community Church. I thank you for the way that you have blessed us, that you have kept us, that you have guarded us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for your protection, God. Thank you for how you are maturing us as a congregation of believers. Thank you for how you have challenged our faith. Thank you for the ways that you have grown our faith. And I thank you, God, for all the things that you have done for us. I pray your blessings over this service. I pray that this time together will be fruitful. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So say what's up to the folks in the chat. I will see y'all on the other side. We've got music and then... I'm coming back with some CP Kit with a CP Kids lesson, and then we've got offering, and then I'll jump into the word. We're continuing our series on cooperative economics titled Jay Z, Du Bois, and the Book of Acts. So I'll see y'all in a minute. Peace. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's praise. Let's praise. Bread of life, Savior, Redeemer. You are. Wonderful counselor, Holy One. You are. Ooh, yeah. Jehovah Jireh, hello. You are. High priest in Oh 
chasing yeah, yeah. Made a way That's why we praise you now You made a way That's why we celebrate Over and over again. Come on, guys, one more round. Um, for the grown-ups today. 
So I'm going to be uh, pulling a lesson from the Storybook Bible. So this is the Bible that the bigger kiddos have that are like ages four and up. Uh, and I'm going to be taking a lesson from the Good Samaritan story. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it, it's, a, it's a longer story, but I'm going to start at page 164. So if you have this Bible, go ahead and grab it. And, uh, and after I pray, we will jump right into the lesson. And the lesson will take maybe about five minutes. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us a chance to learn more about your word. I thank you that no matter what age we are, um, you love us. You have a purpose for us and a plan for us. And you desire to deepen our knowledge and faith uh, about who you are and what it means to follow Jesus and to live a life that is similar to the life that Jesus lived, helping people, loving people, caring for people, and sacrificing for people. Show us how to do that in our everyday lives, no matter what age we are. Show us how significant we are, no matter what age we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so we're looking at page 164, and this is the story of the Good Samaritan. Um, so I'm going to start from the second paragraph on, one, on page 164. It says, then a teacher of the law stood up. He was trying to test Jesus. He said, teacher, what must I do to get life forever? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? Um, what do you read there? The man answered, love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart and all your soul, all your strength and all your mind. Also, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus said to him, your answer is right. Do this and you will have life forever. But the man wanted to show that the way he was living was right. So he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? To answer this question, uh, Jesus said to him, a man was going down. So now Jesus is telling the story now. He says, uh, Jesus said, a man was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some robbers attacked him. They tore off his clothes and beat him. And then they left him lying there almost dead. It happened that a Jewish priest was going down that road. When the priest saw the man, he walked by on the other side of the road. Oh my gosh, why did he leave him? Next, a Levite came there. This is a person who worked for the temple came there. He went over and looked at the man. Then he walked by on the other side of the road. He didn't even stop and help him. Then a Samaritan traveling down the road came to where the hurt man was. He saw the man and felt very sorry for him. The Samaritan went to him and poured olive oil and wine on his wounds. This was the medicine of that day and put bandages on him. He put the hurt man on his own donkey, donkey and took him to end. At the end, the Samaritan took care of him. The next day, the Samaritan brought out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. The Samaritan said, take care of this man. If you spend more money on him, I will pay it back to you when I come again. Then Jesus said, which one of these three men do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the robbers? The teacher of the law answered, Jesus said to him, then go and do the same thing he did. So, kids, this is a story of the Good Samaritan. And maybe you have heard the expression before, be a Good Samaritan. Um, and so this is a story about a person who um, decides to not just look at somebody in need, but to actually help somebody that's in need, effectively not leaving anybody behind. And that's exactly what we're talking about to the grown-ups today is about this idea of like as Christians we shouldn't leave anybody behind maybe you guys experience this maybe sometimes when you're at recess there are a bunch of kids playing together and then there is somebody that is just off by themselves maybe it's because they're new to the school they don't know a lot of people maybe it's because they're not the popular kid at school for whatever reason, there are certain people that just get left behind. One of the things that um, makes Christians special is that when we see people being left behind, even if the rest of the group is leaving them behind, 
we don't think that's okay. We care not just about ourselves, but we care about everybody, right? So when we see people like that, like uh, maybe classmates or people we go to school with being left behind, not being included in games and recess, or uh, not being included at the lunch table, we look at those people and we don't just ignore them like the two people did in this story, right? The priest ignored the person who had, who was beaten and who was left by himself, who needed help. The Levite left the person who was in need of help. But the Samaritan saw the person and could not take his eyes off him. He could not move on with his day. I imagine he was going somewhere. He had some something to do that day, but he couldn't move on with his day. And he decided that, hey, what I have to do is not more important than the need of this man. And so I challenge you that when you see people being left out, that you set your own agenda aside, that you set your own priorities aside for a moment and decide, hey, I'm going to do what I can do to help this person feel included and not be left behind. Or I'm going to help this person. This friend didn't bring a pencil to class or doesn't have paper. I'm going to stop and make sure that I share my supplies or share my crayons or share my markers um, or share my seat or my lunch table that I've been included at. I'm going to invite this person over because I want to make sure that nobody gets left behind. That is an amazing thing to do. And when you do that, you are doing the kinds of things that Jesus talks about and that Jesus values. So again, we leave nobody behind and we do it because of what we learned out of the story about the Good Samaritan. So that's our lesson for today, kids. Um, I hope that it speaks to you. I hope you can find ways tomorrow when you go to school to be on the lookout for those that are being left behind in any way and finding ways that you can include them. All right, y'all. I love you. Peace. Good morning, City Point. Happy Sunday. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you today. This is an opportunity where you can participate. And so there are three different ways that you can give. The first is by a text to give. You can text any dollar amount to 312-313-1800. The next is via Zelle using the email address give at citypointcc.org. And then lastly, you can give going to our church website, citypointcc.org, and click on the Give tab. And so you can give in any of those three ways. And I just want to say thank you so much for your commitment to giving and for partnering with City Point in order to do kingdom business. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to be stewards of the money that you've given us. And we give it back to you, God, saying that it is yours first. And because it is yours, we give it to you. And we acknowledge you as our Jehovah Jireh, as our provider of all that we have. And so I pray, Father, that you would bless everyone that has trust you to give that which you've given them. I pray, Lord, that you would magnify it and that you would use it for your glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, City Point, let's jump right into the word. I'm excited about continuing this series titled Jay-Z Du Bois and the Book of Acts. We are doing our dope thing at the dopest church on the planet. If you missed last week, then you need to go Find that service from last week. Check out that sermon. Um, I believe that it'll bless you. Last week, we kicked off the series uh, talking about uh, Stronger Together. There's a cool illustration at the end of that series. I'm sorry, at the end of that uh, sermon that you should have missed as well. Um, So jumping in, let me also say thank you to to you guys that have shared um, the graphics and things like that regarding this series, opening it up to other people to know about what we're doing here at City Point. And what, what's really happening is we are bending the paradigm, um, bending our thinking as Christians and as members of the church um, as it relates to individualism versus collectivism, as it relates to economics and the possibilities regarding what we can do as a church. If we really, really start reimagining um, the power that we have through um, how trustworthy uh, 
church institutions still are, right? People entrust their dollars week after week to that place. We really start thinking differently about that and expanding our vision of what we can do collectively with that coin. Um, I think the sky is the limit and we have absolutely started to do that work at City Point. Um, of course, the things that we did last year around cooperative economics um, that I've talked about a lot, I won't go back into those things. But then also this year, kind of taking that up to the next level, and we started started this uh, cooperative economics initiative where we are doing debt repayment grants and providing up to a thousand dollars for any member um, that needs to or wishes to pay down debt and serious about going on a journey um, to get free from debt. That's cooperative economics, right? We're using money that we have pulled together as a church family, and we are uh, allocating those dollars to one another to help each other uh, in. So that's really dope. Speaking of that, if you have not applied for that, um, our goal is to do 20,000 during this first round. The application opened last Sunday, and we already have, uh, as of this recording, 14 people that have applied. So we got six more slots. So if you need it, uh, if you're a member or regular attendee of City Point, uh, make sure that you go there and apply. All right, let's jump right into the word. Uh, I'm looking at Acts chapter six. Verse one, brief word of prayer, and then we'll jump right in. Lord, thank you so much for giving me this chance to preach your word. I pray that it will be meaningful and impactful to your people. God, give us this space to be undistracted during this time, to hear what you would have to say to us. I pray these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter six, verse one, from the New uh, International Version. Here is what it says. It says, in those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. That's Acts chapter 6, uh, verse 1 from the New uh, International Version. I want to talk for a few minutes about leave no one behind. Leave no one behind. In the 1998 movie Saving Private Ryan, we are met with the dangerous tenacity with which Tom Hanks' character goes after finding and bringing home Private James Ryan. In the movie, which is set in World War II, uh, Private Ryan has lost all of his brothers to war, and so the United States military has decided that since he is his mother's only remaining or surviving son, it is imperative for them that Private Ryan be brought home from the war. And so risking life and limb, uh, Captain John Miller, who is played by Tom Hanks, searches all over until he is able to find and ensure that Private Ryan leaves that battlefield safe and sound. Uh, the heart-grabbing part of this story is that Tom Hanks' character risks and loses his life ensuring that Private Ryan is not left behind. This theme of not being left behind is not only applicable for war and the good Hollywood movie, but may I suggest to you that it is also a model for cooperation within the Lord's Church. And so I raise the question to you this morning, what are you willing to risk to ensure that when it comes to those within your church family, that economically, no one is left behind. I, this kind of thinking flies in the face of the me, myself, and I mentalities. That this type of question grates against individualistic, my life is about my personal relationship with Jesus Christ and him taking me on a journey from where I am to my personal, prosperous, destiny kind of thinking. Yes, this thinking calls for a deconstruction of self-preservation and self-first thinking, and it pushes for one to care more about the well-being of the whole than just oneself. 
So I ask again, what are you willing to risk to ensure that when it comes to those within your congregation, the people that you worship with in person or virtually, the people who you share spiritual food with Sunday after Sunday, the families whose kids play with your kids, who are part of your community group, who sit on the same row as you in person, who you fist bump or hug on Sunday mornings, whose comments you look forward to in the chat or who post or share insights that make you feel seen and heard. My question to you this morning is what are you willing to risk to ensure when it comes to those within your church family, no one is left behind. Uh, This theme of interdependence for uplift and support comes out in Jay-Z's Feeling It on the Reasonable Doubt album. In that song, he talks about the value of ensuring financial success, not just for oneself, but for one's whole crew. In other words, Jay says it ain't enough to make it and gloat success and to be able to front in front of your people. Uh, Instead, the better way is to care about everybody's come up. And he says that the value of it is that this kind of thinking actually fortifies the entire group because the success of others serves as a hedge against one's own downfall. The verse says, if everybody in your clique is rich, your clique is rugged, nobody will fall because everyone will be each other's crutches. Here he talks about economic cooperation, or in other words, cooperative economics, where he says, leveraging our resources to help each other come up and leveraging our resources to protect against each other's downfall is a way that we ensure that we leave nobody behind. Du Bois champions this same idea. He champions the same notion of cooperative economics and leaving no one behind as he expresses it in his report, Economic Cooperation Among Negro Americans. Uh, He talks about the need for us to swim against this common tide of individualism, this, this, this common tide of individualism, and he, and he pushes us to go against the grain and to go against the tide and to lean into collectivist thinking. There's no better source, though, to talk about this notion of cooperative economics, to talk about this notion of collectivist kind of thinking, talk about this idea of Christians not leaving anybody behind, that there is no better place, I think, for this occasion than to look at the word of God. It's in Acts chapter 6, we find the church facing this exact issue. It seems that all is well in the church, that they are working well cooperatively, they are sharing their goods with each other, they are sharing money with each other, they are practicing selflessness, they are loving and serving Jesus Christ, but then all of a sudden, a complaint arises. But what is the complaint that that lifts itself up in this almost utopian kind of church that is happening at this point? What what is it that happens to, to come in to start to disrupt this Christian movement Here it is. Greek-speaking Jewish widows were being overlooked when it came to the daily distribution of food. In other words, somebody was being left behind. Apparently, they had put together some sort of feeding program that was available to all. Perhaps it was uh, not available to everybody, but perhaps it was just available to all of the Christian widows that were in Jerusalem. But whatever it was, they saw as their duty and opportunity this notion of ensuring that they took care of the needs of anybody that was left vulnerable within the church. That's the good part. Ah, but favoritism. Favoritism seems to have stepped in and disrupted this thing. Perhaps it wasn't favoritism. Maybe it was simply unconscious bias that stepped in. But maybe the notices about the food distribution were not going out in a multilingual way so that it made sure that everybody was communicated to whether they spoke Greek or Hebrew. I I don't know what it was. Perhaps Sister Jackson 
was in charge of spreading the news about the food distribution, and the only people that she told were the Hebrew-speaking widows, because those were the ones that she plays cards with. Now, I don't know what happened, where the mishap was. Maybe Brother Johnson was the one that was responsible for getting the word out to all of the widows about the food distribution, but Brother, jo Brother Johnson be forgetting things. He told the Hebrew-speaking widows, but forgot it slipped his mind to tell the Greek-speaking widows about the food distribution. Maybe it just was an accident. Or maybe it was nefarious. But at any rate, somebody was being left behind. So I want to talk about what it means to leave no one behind. Uh, how we, as a church, and as Christians who will go out and be the church in our respective vocations, I want to talk about what it means to leave no one behind to be able to be intentional about that, leveraging some lessons from this story. Here it is. First of all, to leave no one behind means we see each other's needs. I remember some time ago, I remember a professor having us observe a penny for homework. He said, all right, here's the homework. I want you to take a penny. I want you to write down all your observations about that penny, as many as you can. And so coming back to class at the next class time, myself, my peers, we brought our observations back. Most of us had 10 to 15 observations that we had written down about that penny. Felt good about what we had. We submitted it to the professor the professor also had us share it with each other in class. And, and the only thing he told us was, I need y'all to take 10 more minutes, look again, and come up with more observations. So we did that. We spent some time coming up with more observations and found more. And all he said was, take another 10 minutes and observe and find some more. And so he did this several times until many of us had observed some 30 to 40 things about that penny. Now, this exercise that he had sent us through was to sharpen our observation skills. Uh, it was to get us sharper so that when we look at Scripture, we don't just glance at it, but we look intently and see. Let me say to you that that is an important skill to have when it comes to people. To see. To not just look at them, but to see them. When you log into community groups, do you see the people? When you get online to pray, people share their vulnerable moments. Do you see them? When you read each other's comments in the chat, do you see them? When you attend Sunday school virtually together, do you see the people? When you attend service in person, I know you see bodies in the space, but do you see the people? Do you see the fatigue? Do you see the weariness? Do you see the worry? Do you see the grief? Do you see the pain? Do you see them? Look with me at Acts chapter 6, verse 1 again. It says, In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. The pretext of this verse is that somebody saw the people and saw the need. This program of food distribution was, was created because somebody saw that need. Let me say to you that this is the first step in what it means to leave no one behind. It is to, first of all, see each other. It is a theme that comes up not just here, but it also comes up in Matthew. Remember when Matthew records Jesus as saying in his parable about the kingdom that some will say, Lord, when did we see you hungry, naked, or sick, or in prison, and didn't feed, or clothe, or care for, or visit you? Jesus will say, when you saw them, the least of these, you saw me. 
This point that I'm making about visibility is not just about seeing the so-called least of these, but it is about seeing, being interested and perceptive enough to see all of our beloved siblings in Christ. Because my bank account and my, and my well-being are not necessarily correlated. My job and my joy are not necessarily connected. Uh, leaving no one behind means we see each other. Second thing that we do is we need to make solutions available to everyone. Yes, leaving no one behind means that we make solutions available to everyone. In the text, they created solutions, but unfortunately, their solutions were not available to everyone. Let me say to you that crucial to leaving no one behind is asking the question, who gets left out by this solution? Who are we not accounting for? When we put in place CP care, the, the idea was to provide a next level of counseling service to the members of the church that would be provided by professionals that we would compensate. City Point would cover the cost for these services, but what quickly became apparent was that especially in this area of grief, there were quite a few people who were not connected to City Point who needed these services as well. So we had come up with a good solution, but we had not considered the non-members in need that would be left out. And so now we are back to the drawing board figuring out how to make it available to non-members, yet still financially sustainable for City Point's budget to absorb. We have to think about who gets left out. I love our in-person church experience. I love the live music. I love the connection to people. I love seeing the kids excited to see each other. I love the food. I love breaking bread with you all. I love all of it. It's a fantastic experience unless you need the assistance of a wheelchair. There's a step up to get into our building. Just one step. But right there, it assumes that everybody who wants to come in and experience all the dope stuff that I just named, has the ability to step up. Our bathrooms are not ADA compliant. There are 15 steps for a parent to drop their child off in the nursery. 15 steps up, I should say, or 15 steps to climb to be able to drop their child off in the nursery. Our service is highly auditory. We are leaving deaf persons we are leaving behind deaf persons from being able to participate fully in the experience of our service. We have to make solutions available for everyone if we are to leave no one behind. Let me push you to consider who you're leaving behind at your work. Are you ableist at work? Are you ableist when it comes to those who you would hire for your team? How do you share job opportunities that come up in your organization or even on your team? Who does it leave out? The, the emails that you send within your network about the position that is about to come up or that has come up on your team or within your organization, who do you send that out to? Is it just the folks that are within your network? Does that hoard opportunities amongst those that already have good connections and good networks? Who is being left behind? The programs, products, services that your company produces. Ask the question, who's being left behind? In the text, despite what may have been good intentions, the Greek-speaking widows were being left behind. Let me say to you that core to the Christian ethic is that we leave no one behind. Thirdly and finally, to leave no one behind means to acknowledge shortcomings and correct them. 
Verse number two of chapter six says, so the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. So when this problem of some folks being left behind were brought to church leaders. They reasoned within themselves that it would not be prudent for us to give up the work that we are doing that is related to the word, the preaching and the teaching, for us to manage the food distribution. But we do need to solve the problem. And so in a very solution-oriented way, they decided, let's find some people. <clears throat> in, in their situation and in their culture, they decided for it to be men. But in our solutioning, it, it does not need to be limited to men. But they decided to come up with a solution. Let's put some people in place that can be responsible for this. Essentially, they said, we need a new leadership role created within the church. Yeah, they acknowledged where they had come up short, and they created a solution to the shortcomings, and they said, let's create a new leadership role in the church. We can't just rely on Sister Jackson and Brother Johnson or Brother Washington to get the word out and and and, and for uh, some haphazard uh, um, structure for distribution uh, to get in the way of us doing this good thing, this noble thing well, let's make it somebody's official role. Let's get some qualified people that can help do this important thing. And let's make sure we do it right. Yeah, they didn't dodge. They didn't make excuses. They acknowledged and came up with a solution to try to get it right. That, my siblings... That is how you leave no one behind, or at least attempt to. You work at it. You work at it. You, you don't get it perfect. You don't get it right every time. You may never get it to that place of perfection, but you attempt to leave no one behind. That's what Christian cooperation looks like. That, that's what it looks like with economic cooperation, that that's what it looks like with any form of cooperation within the church. You leave nobody behind. So let me close simply by saying this. As we go deeper into this cooperative work, let's think and let's dream holistically, taking the whole into account. How do we ensure the well-being of everybody in our church? How do we Ensure that our clique is rugged, as Jay says. Nobody would fall because everyone would be each other's crutches. How, how do we ensure that? Such that we leave no one behind. <sighs> Man, I think we are on to something, City Point Community Church. I think that what we have begun to do is exceptionally beautiful. It's not new because generations of Christians have done this before. Black Christians have done this in this country before. Christians of color have done this um, in this country before. Christians of all stripes have done this before. But it has become a bit of a lost art. As we have spun into this space of individualism within the body over the last however many years. What we are endeavoring on is special. But it will require some ethics. It will require us to push against selfishness. It will require us to push against me, myself, and I mentality. It will require us to think about the collective more than we think about ourselves. But through doing that, we create a protective hedge around ourselves. That says, I might be up today. I might be able today. I might be good today. But it doesn't. But the reality is I, things could change up for me tomorrow and I know I'm good because I, my people got me. 
that is what it should mean to be a part of a church. Not just having some people that I sing and clap with, but having people that I got and having people that got me. That is the beautiful part of this whole thing. Got to put in the work in order to do it. Thank you guys for being willing to put in the work and for already being on this journey doing this work. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for challenging us in good ways uh, today. That what it means to be cooperative truly is to leave no one behind. I pray that you will embed this into our ethos, our ethics as a church. And I pray, God, that you will take us even further in this cooperative work. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're here, you've never accepted Jesus Christ for salvation. Today is the perfect, perfect day to do it. It simply acknowledges that on my best day, I come up short and I need a savior. If you are accepting Christ for the first time, I invite you to follow the directions on the screen and a member from our team will follow up with you. Also, perhaps if you are just doing church in the wild and you've already accepted Christ, but you know you need to connect with the church family, uh, I invite you to follow the directions on the screen. Um, a member from our team will follow up with you. We would love to have you as a part of City Point Community Church. Whether you are local here in Chicago or you may be anywhere on this planet, City Point is a church because of the way we engage digitally and in person. City Point is a church that you can connect with and genuinely feel like family. We've got members in different parts of the country that connect and will tell you that they feel embedded into this place and they feel like family. Um, if, for some of you, you need that and you know you need that. Perhaps it is church hurt. Perhaps it is just church problems, whatever it is um, that have caused you to be disconnected from any church family. Let me push you to consider whether or not this could be that safe, that safe space that you have been looking for. Where you can be a part of a church, be yourself, be your authentic self. And, um, and believe that people are going to bring their best self to their relationship with you. Um, that's what we endeavor to do here in this place that we call Simply Caring, Simply Community, and Simply Church. So if that's you, I invite you to follow the directions on the screen. Finally, if you desire prayer about anything, follow the directions on the screen, and a member from our team will follow up with you. Uh, if you missed any of these prompts, you can also go to our website, citypointcc.org, and uh, on the membership page or the prayer page, you can find uh, links to do these same things that you were able to do by the text prompts that we shared. All right. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for uh, the fact that you still bring people into the body of Christ and you still answer prayers. I pray that you will meet the folks exactly where they are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I got a few announcements and then I'm going to get up out of y'all way. Uh, so announcement number one, our Cooperative Economics um, Debt Repayment Initiative is in full effect. <clears throat> we are doing this. We've got uh, about 14, again, 14 people as of the time of this recording have applied. Um, we've got about six slots left um, for those that will get in on this first round of grants up to $1,000 to help pay off debt. What we're also asking, the steering committee, we're also asking that those who will participate in this grant program will also be willing to be a part of our cohort. Um, we'll meet monthly um, to share resources and support for one another on our journey toward getting out of debt. So I ask that if you are participating and receiving the grant, that you be down to be a part of this cohort, both to give and to receive, right? You're receiving support from folks, um, best practices from folks on like what it looks like to navigate uh, getting out of debt, paying off debt, but you're also giving support, sharing resources with people, um, sharing insights, your testimony with other people. And we'll be gathering roughly monthly uh, as a group, virtually sometime, and then also sometimes in person. So you'll also get information about that when we follow up about whether or not you receive the grant. So keep uh, sending those applications in. Guys, thank you uh, again for giving toward, which is my second announcement, um, the community fund. We're able to do this, y'all, because of two reasons. Y'all are giving toward this community fund, so we have access to money to be able to do this. We ain't got like a money printer upstairs at City Point. It's because of the people's giving that we're
were able to do this. Uh, and then secondly, because we've had fewer in-person services and we've been able to redirect this money, just like I told y'all, redirect some of the money from the services into the cooperative economics work. That's why we have this money. And so for the community fund aspect, we, have, we are far away from our goal. Our goal is 45,000. Um, we need to kick into gear. So our goal is to do this by Easter Sunday. So here's what I need y'all to do. I need you to be prayerful. I need y'all to not make me go 90s boy band and have to beg for it. Um, I need us to just pray about, God, how can I be generous um, toward this community fund effort? I love what we're doing. I believe in what we're doing. I believe in my church. All right, God, push me. I, I already tithe. I checked that box. This is some be up above and beyond stuff. I got my own things above and beyond that I would like to do. How should I sacrifice to help this thing? Let me push you guys to pray about that and then do something about it. Write the check, um, send the Zelle, whatever you got to do to give toward this so we can hit that number so we'll have all the funds in place that we need um, to for this. So to remind you guys how we're doing this, we're raising 45000 for this community fund campaign. We're putting that 45000 with 55000 this year that we're redirecting from our general operating budget. That equals 100000 Of that 100000 that's going into that community fund, 75000 is going toward our cooperative economics work, right? So just helping people pay off debt, work, we're using 75000 to do that. Right, so this first round right now, we're doing 20,000. That's about how much we can set aside. Um, the other 25,000, right? So we got 100,000 for the community fund, 75,000 is going toward cooperative economics work, 25,000 is going toward benevolence, right? That kind of traditional, classic community fund stuff, helping people that are in need. Yo, I lost my job, I'm trying to float rent for a couple months. Can you help me? That community fund is in place to do that, that 25000 for that work. So that's what we're doing. It's dope church stuff. You don't even need to think about it if you're on board. You're on board with it because you're a part of this kind of church, right? This is what you love about City Point. But it cannot get done in the abstract. They ain't going to do it. We going to do it, right? Including you. Including you. So um, so please give toward that. A few ways you can give. You can sell it. Give at citypointcc.org. Um, you can give through our website. You can text to give uh, 312-313-1800. Text the dollar amount followed by the word community fund, all one word, community fund. And we know to designate it into that. If you're giving through Zelle, make sure you put something in the memo line so we know that that's not tithes and offerings, that that's for the community fund. And then stockdonator.com. So if you would like to donate stock, um, we can accept stock through stockdonator.com. Go there, search for City Point, and you can make the donation there. So we've got a bunch of different ways you can do this. We can do this. We can do this. We got this. Um, so, yeah, so th those are my first couple announcements. Other announcements. Congratulations to City Point. Um, congratulations uh, as a, uh, our entire production team. So our 2020 series that happened uh, in June of 2020 titled Do the Right Thing. Some of y'all remember that series. Uh, the sermons were um, um, uh, Dear Black Elite, Dear Evangelicals, Becky, and Keep Doing the Right Thing. We were certainly in our bag during that sermon series. Um, that series has been entered into the collection and archives of the National Museum the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. So our children's children's children will be able to do their research on City Point Community Church at a national level and see the work um, that we were doing during one, of, during one of the most trying times in our country. I'm so excited about that. I'm forcing myself to celebrate it and to celebrate it again and again um, because um, I don't do a good job of celebrating my wins and accomplishments, and so I'm indeed celebrating it. So thank you guys as a church. Thank you, our production crew, for the hard work that you did uh, for it, and uh, it's just a super dope honor to be able to be um, acknowledged in this way. 
All right, we've got in-person service this coming Sunday. So the third Sunday of March, we've got our in-person service. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, I joked with Nissa and told her I'm taking attendance on the third Sunday because she, she might not be there on third Sunday. Um, so, so when we get to June and we have our next town hall to talk about, all right, we've done several months of like in person twice a month. Let's see how it's going. I'm going to bring up, yo, third Sunday was dope. It was, people were there. It was packed. A lot of people showed up. Let's keep it going or let's do it every Sunday or whatever. But if these third Sundays is me and the band, um, it's going to be hard for y'all to make y'all case in June that we should keep having two services a month. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, so let's uh, let's let the proof be in the pudding. I look forward to seeing you guys uh, on the third Sunday. Of course, we don't have modern day communion on third Sunday. So the service will be shorter. We'll be in and out of there in an hour 15. Uh, so look forward to seeing you guys there. And we'll be on the third installment of our series. That is next Sunday, right? Um, and then... Um, on the screen is our uh, schedule for our services for the rest of um, rest of the next few months. So in April, we've got it on 1st and 2nd because of Easter, May 1st and 2nd Sunday because of Mother's Day, and then June, we've got 1st and 3rd Sunday. And then we'll meet up, talk about where things are, and we'll decide as a congregation again how we want to move forward, all right? So um, last but not least, we are offering our um, CP Care. Uh, grief counseling sessions. It's available for members and non-members. We initially intended these things to be for members, um, but we did get requests from non-members. And so we have no problem at all with non-members um, being able to take advantage of the service. Certainly we want to be a space that does that. The only thing we're trying to figure out is, is budget. Like how do we just not run out of money for funding this thing as we broaden it out uh, outside the church because for our counselors we do compensate them uh, for their time so um, so yeah so for now it's open to everybody and we will figure things out um, between us and God we will figure out the money part of, of it all and, uh, and make sure that we can provide this for everybody all right so member non-member go ahead um, the information is on the screen um, for how you can uh, schedule time with Reverend Wanjiku for these grief counseling sessions. All right. All right. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for everything that we experienced today. We thank you for your blessings. I pray that you will allow what we experience in the service to resound with us uh, as we go throughout our week. Keep us, guard us, protect us. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Be in prayer, guys. A lot of good things are happening are brewing uh, for the church. So just, just be in prayer and I hope to have some, uh, some cool news to share with you guys really soon. Uh, in the meantime, pray for each other as well and pray for my family. I love y'all. Peace. <laughs>